Disturbances in the Southern Hemisphere on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for March 25th. Well, we've had a big 10-day absence from the Tropical Weather Bulletins recently, and that was enforced, unfortunately. Uh, I've been quite unwell for a good eight of those days, but I am now in a state to be able to relay the latest around the world of tropics, and it hasn't been necessarily busy at all. We are unclassified, with no systems active, and it's where you left it on March the 15th. It's 68 days until Atlantic hurricane season and we've got a uh, moderate severe weather event currently going on in the central United States but apart from that it's looking fairly quiet across the Atlantic Ocean. Southern Hemisphere is where it's at where we've got two areas of interest either side of Australia, 10% there not far from uh, New Caledonia moving towards the southeast slowly. Another 10% small system uh, in the eastern part of the Indian Ocean south of Indonesia and another 10% that we have there over the western part of the Indian Ocean, the southwestern region and that will slowly very broad system move on towards the southwest. None of these have particularly favorable chances of development, but at some point, some of that soup over there towards the eastern part of the Indian Ocean might consolidate to become something, but uh, whether it is this current system or whether it would be something else, there's still big question marks uh, over that right now. So no named systems, let's take a look at some satellite imagery around the world, look out for some red spots there showing the high amounts of rainfall in some locations, mainly across the Amazon and in some parts of the tropical regions of Africa there as well. Uh, but in general, certainly nothing from tropical cyclones. A wide shot of the southwest Indian Ocean and you can barely see where this uh, suppose disturbance would be. It's a very weak system, uh, surface low indicated from computer models right now uh, with very little convection over it. So that's sort of towards the east, uh, to the east of the Seychelles um, right now, not marked as an invest. This is though, this one here, this is not far from Indonesia and slowly, slowly moving southwestwards. Uh, not much rotation on that, but it's got decent amounts of convection as you can quite clearly see. This is 94 S if I'm not mistaken, uh, but I may have already gotten confused with those designations. That slowly moving southwestwards uh, could have a little opportunity later on down the line uh, but within five days at least it's a 10% and here's the other system yes 95p there that's in the south Pacific not too far from New Caledonia you can see the outline there on the very bottom right hand corner of the image it's sort of been detached into two little blobs of convection there and it's struggling quite a bit right now but certainly we could see some enhanced rainfall over those islands Sea surface temperatures picking up in the eastern Pacific where we've got temperatures approaching 30 degrees already, well around 29 degrees just off the coast of eastern Mexico. Over the Atlantic region still got a way to go yet, uh, 26 degree isotherm, a yellow um, interchange there uh, shows where those warm enough SSTs are lurking and in the Indian Ocean very hot pockets off the coast of Sri Lanka and in the Andaman Sea but in general it's looking pretty moderate. Southwest Indian Ocean, look towards the northern peripheries there for the warmest conditions in those tropical zones. Still got plenty of life in it as we start to get towards the later part of the season down there and towards the Australian region. Look at the amount of heat and energy there off the coast of Western Australia, which is where that system is at the moment and maybe something to watch out for in the near future. Uh, we have seen April Category 5s in that region before and if anything really gets going over those SSTs, I wouldn't put anything out of bounds. And in the South Pacific there, you can see across the... Um, across Vanuatu and the Solomon Islands, very warm SSTs, 30 degrees plus. And in the Western Pacific, 
decent temperatures extending further north as well uh, towards the northern Philippine Islands and across Guam and the northern Mariana Islands. Very good at sea surface temperatures. They are above average. South China Sea, still below average, but not as much as where we last left it. And in general, everything is quite evened out since the last tropical weather bulletin, and most areas are above average in the areas that matter. Uh, the Pacific, the what's left of the La Nina, that's pretty much gone, and it looks like we are on course for an El Nino later this year because we're already starting to see those above normal sea surface temperatures. Oceanic heat content is still favorable down to Fiji and Vanuatu with good amounts there into the turquoises and beyond. In the northern hemisphere, already starting to get some progress there in the eastern Pacific, more than we had last year. And in the western Pacific, Philippine Sea, getting some really warm colors up there from Guam to the Philippines. Checking the GFS computer model for the next five days, that's the short range of course. You can just about make out this disturbance and you can still see it there persisting a little bit to moving towards a westerly direction and it's just all kinds of interesting stuff going on all across the southeastern Indian Ocean there. A big trough region it would appear uh, towards the end of those five days and something might pop out of that later on. Uh, off the west coast of Australia, but nothing really in concrete. Neither is there in the coral sea. We've not even shown you that one because there's hardly anything to see, but there could be enhanced rainfall amounts in this area over the next seven days, which is what we're looking at on this graphic. So for parts of New Caledonia and Vanuatu, we could see some locally elevated amounts of rainfall and also towards Fiji as well from tropical disturbances getting up to around two inches of rainfall there in those areas in the next seven days that's uh, 50 millimeters but could be double that across Fiji on the main islands and even some of its smaller islands out towards the east and southeast as well above two inches of rainfall possible 50 millimeters once again and higher amounts out at sea so if a system does consolidate you could be looking at much higher amounts if that brings all of those rain all that rainfall closer to land in longer range day 5 through 10 we're looking at the australian region again off the western coast and a formation of a tropical uh, cyclone there you can see it and a little bit of a interaction with another system that really starts forming off there off the coast of indonesia where does that come from good question i think it is a weakness that actually develops just on the northern side of those islands at first. The CMC I know brings it in from the east and maybe those two collide to bring you this cyclone that really starts to intensify towards the end of that 10 day period. That's the important stuff done with though. You can scan the barcode there and take a look at the Force 13 merch store with all of our uh, items including pillows I just threw at you again and the still waiting for Hone t-shirt which is still out there just like Hone is somewhere. Well, in the silly range, this cyclone goes bananas and gets to an extremely powerful intensity to 906 millibars. Awesome vibes there, if you ask me. Cyclone Orson, which hit as a Category 5 in 1989 on the western coast of Australia and then clatters into the coastline there with a pressure around 930 millibars, at least a Category 4 by then, and most likely a Category 5 at peak there on the Saffir Simpson scale, most definitely a Category 5 on the Australian scale with a cyclone coming in behind it as well there. So really fascinating to see what is possible over those nuclear warm sea surface temperatures in the western region of Australia. You can talk about that and anything in the wide world of tropics and weather in general on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 uh, to chat with over 3,000 members. On this day, it was March 25th, 1982, when we had a big surprise, Cyclone or Typhoon Nelson, which made a very powerful 130 mile per hour landfall on Leyte in the Philippines and was moving through the rest of the islands later on. It looked pretty decent on that satellite imagery, although it didn't keep up that appearance for very long. We also had Cyclone Justine, which was starting to weaken off the south, south coast of Madagascar and was going to turn gradually post-tropical throughout the course of today. But Nelson certainly won for the books there in Philippine history for how early in the season it was and such a strength too. 
Something that seems to be lacking strength so far is the numbers of this year so far. Uh, we still haven't seen anything in the Northern Hemisphere. The first name in the Atlantic is Arlene, Adrian in the Eastern Pacific, and of course Hone in the Central Pacific. In the West Pack, it's Sanvu next up, and in the North Indian Ocean, we'll be looking out for Mocha. Just 11 storms so far this year. Of course, one of those was Freddy, which could probably account for four or five different cyclone lifetimes, but it only counts as one. Next up in the Australian region is Herman, the Southwest Indian Ocean, Fabienne, and the South Pacific, it's Lola. But that's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.